Hello my sock universe to a very Dutch review of Northwestern Europe because uh, in the Premier League there were no games played and there's a lot of FA Cup action but I told you before FA Cup once we get to the round of 16 I'll look into the matchups there so yeah there will be only a teeny bit of Premier League at the very end so it will be all Eredivisie and even uh, fully deserved so because the biggest game in these two countries was definitely played in the Eredivisie. It finished about an hour ago and yeah, memories are still a little fresh. So in the Netherlands, despite really horrific COVID numbers, which is another thing that connects the two countries, um, the round was played and there were no postponements and postponements. There were, um, you know, a couple of interesting results. Um, and the main headline from these results is that the title race is still very much open, although with a little caveat that I will end um, on the back, uh, uh, on the end. Yes, Ajax PSV ended in a draw, which kept everything uh, open. There was uh, one potential title contender dropped out, but everything else stayed on par. So uh, let's look at a few interesting results here. Um, I think the first one is, of course, Vitesse keeping up the good form by winning 2-0 at Heracles with two goals from on each side of either half, all both coming late in their respective house. Bero uh, scoring both of these in the 38th and the 83rd. Lots of symmetries there, uh, rather nicely. Then uh, the team that dropped the points was AZ, although being statistically dominant, uh, they were chasing uh, the game uh, after Clément uh, put Zwolle to, uh, ahead in the ninth minute. They get to Mitio, the equalizer in the 67th, but cannot find the win. Um, interesting game between Utrecht and Groningen ends 2-2. I think Groningen had to uh, come back and still no Ariane Robben there. The Rotterdam Derby was an all Feyenoord affair. A 2-0 win to Gertrude, Gertrude and then Jorgensen very late uh, after Burkhaus assist uh, adds the other goal. Um, I wish I would have watched highlights of that one, but they were not yet available. And yeah, I want to do this fresh right now. And then the big one, the top one, was a really good game. <laughs> uh, in a game of two halves almost, because in the first half, especially in the first 30, 35, if not, yeah, 35 minutes, PSV really took the game to Ajax, or at least played it very smartly. Ajax completely still in the winter break. And after two minutes, uh, Ma it was a wonderful assist. I mean, the ball comes in, uh, Marlon uh, backheels into Sahavi, and in the second minute, he puts it into internet. That was a wonderfully played goal and set the game up. And I think for the next 10 minutes, Ajax couldn't find really their footing. Um, and just when Ajax thought they had the game again, a little bit under, under control to push for the, the equalizer, again, Marlon finds Sahavi. To make it 2-0, another very, very well played goal. It was Zahavi Marlin who plays it back into the, uh, the path of Zahavi. Ajax rattled, but I always had, had, had the feeling that if they uh, compose themselves, they can come back into, into this game, which they actually managed. Uh, there were a few chances before, I think Tadic at one point hit the uh, crossbar. Uh, and then he assists. I mean, he had the ball out outside, uh, moves past the player into in the box, and then puts it to Quincy Promise, who can uh, make it one two. To be honest, there were also chances for PSV to make it three one uh, or three nil and put the game out of hand for Ajax, but they just did not manage that. But it was a very well deserved lead for PSV uh, heading into the half. But after the half, Sebastian Olea just newly. Uh, uh, signed from West Ham, came on and he seemingly in the 50th uh, score already equalized, but it was by a hair of sight. But at that point then, uh, you, you see that Ajax is really, 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 really pressing going forward and uh, they get equalized through Anton in the 65th, with a rather weird celebration. There was maybe a conversation with the coach who didn't really appreciate that. I was not sure. Uh, then the game stalled a little bit maybe slight advantage Ajax. I think in the second, second half Ajax was uh, better, but very late on uh, PSV could have well got, gotten the winner. There was a last ditch effort uh, saved and it ends in a 2-2 draw. I think on the balance, this was a deserved result, but it was also points missed for PSV, a big point missed for PSV. 
um, because they had the 2 0 lead and probably uh, did not manage to kill off the game. Um, you see the shirt choice, I'm wearing Ajax, but I decided on the away jersey and put the other two jerseys up there between Ajax and PSV, uh, just because to kind of, you know, PSV played in black, so um, to have it a little bit balanced. But yeah, I mean Ajax, I was definitely for Ajax in that game as they are my team in the Netherlands. So with that, let's look at the standings. And I, I added something more in the new feature that I am really happy to uh, introduce you now with the Eredivisie and we'll look at it in the other leagues too. But first the standings and we'll see Ajax now only a point uh, ahead of PSV. If PSV would have won, they would have been in first place. And it's between those two that the championship will be decided despite Feyenoord and Vitesse only being um, um, three points behind Ajax. So it is rather tight on top but I think that the class of Ajax and PSV in the end will shine through. Um, same thing goes for the Champions League. I think those are the two teams that are really serious for the Champions League. Uh, we also see that Feyenoord at the moment would be uh, qualified for the newly minted uh, Europa Conference League because the cup winner is the one that goes in the Europa League and then there is a player for the finals but in the Europa Conference League which I hadn't had so far so the next four will then make a playoff. Uh, to qualify for that. Now, uh, as previously, we can also look now at expected and projected points. Um, these are the adjusted standings, but since everyone has the same, uh, we don't need to adjust much. Um, but we can see actually performance wise that Ajax is pretty much performing on power, but everyone below is actually quite good. And Vitesse, of course, being a positive surprise for the uh, season, as is 20 and to a certain extent Groningen and all the others on the bottom are rather badly performing. But what I want to really get it, get into is the expected standings because we have the expected points. Let's give you the expected standings where I've worked on, on this now. Uh, the first one gives you kind of the relative strength. Uh, this, this, this is the rating where the lowest team has a very low curve and this is just in relation to each other. It's not the necessarily the rating but that you have a feeling how the teams differ and you can really see that the top teams we test is maybe the uh, the weakest one of the top teams, but uh, it's pretty much the top teams go on top, uh, except Utrecht is kind of a little bit a downer, and really the weakest teams are on the bottom with Valweig, who is the lowest rated one, actually being quite well. Expected points, I mean the win draw loss, I uh, have to say this is all rounded to the nearest integer, so they might not add up to the 34 that we would like to see. I, and I think in Ajax's case, they all already only add up to 33. This is rounding error. This is to be expected. I'm still thinking maybe there's some other numbers that I could put in there. But here we have the average points at the end and we'll see that Ajax is still very much expected to be uh, with a sizable distance. I mean, seven, seven points is not little ahead of PSV and then it's Feyenoord and Vitesse behind. But I think the most interesting part of uh, these standings here is what's two to the right, where I took the distribution of the final uh, positions. So number one being uh, to the very left and number 18 to the very right. Um, and then shaded them according to the probability. The most likely is the brightest one or the, or, or the strongest one and what's not likely go fades in, in, into white. And we can clearly see that Ajax, and we saw it with the probability for Ajax, is odds on to finish first. PSV odds on to finish in the Champions League qualification, uh, they are in second place. And then we also can see that um, Feyenoord, Vitesse and AZ are the teams that are expected to uh, fight for these European spots and uh, Groningen and Twente probably are the next two, but they are more looking at the other team because Utrecht might join. And I would say that Herdewein, uh, uh, Sparta, Zwolle, uh, the teams that could make it in there, but most likely they are in no man's land. And then starting for William Dwey, there is where we see the truly the teams that are in danger of being relegated with MN being the most threatened one. So I really like this visual re re representation of what we can expect from these teams. Uh, but first we look at the next round in the Netherlands 
where we have a midweek round and there's another big matchup between PSV and AZ on Wednesday. That's definitely one to watch. Ajax at 20, also not a bad matchup at all. Um, and uh, Feyenoord against Zwolle, no, nah, it's not. Vitesse against Utrecht, that's a potential sleeper game if you're into the uh, Eredivisie. I also want to give you the rounds of the games for the weekend because I'm not sure when I will do the review video. But we'll see. Everything points to the last game, the Classica Ajax. Fair North, pretty big matchup there. Uh, PSV has to play Sparta, Vitesse at Emmen, so uh, those should be easy wins for those two. And that's it against Den Haag, the same thing. So this will be a rather uh, important game for Ajax to win. And now, finally, as promised for the Premier League, the same thing with the expected standings, um, where you can see that Manchester City given, uh, is given the current standings and their ratings, Manchester City is expected to finish in first, but just a point ahead of Liverpool. Again, winter losses might not add up to one. You also see the relative strengths here. Um, it's also pretty clear that Manchester City, Liverpool and United are the other teams that most likely will, uh, will end up in the Champions League. And then uh, for the last spot, it's kind of a three-way race between Chelsea, Spurs and Leicester. Aston Villa might go for the last Euro European spot. They have, could have a word there, but they are already a little bit out of contention there. And I would even argue it's only Chelsea and Spurs that really go for uh, the last uh, Champions League spot. Um, as the big team Arsenal there that also is not very likely to qualify for Europe at this very moment, rather in no man's land. And for relegation, the picture is also pretty much clear. Uh, according to current ratings, um, Fulham, despite having a good shape as of late, is still on the outside looking in and Newcastle, uh, Burnley and Brighton are maybe rather safe, but you know, on the edge teetering. Sheffield United and West Brom will be relegating according to my model. So well, that was a rather unusual <laughs> Premier League Eredivisie one because we only had the Eredivisie playing with a huge matchup. That's why I decided to go all Dutch here on top. Let me know what you thought about uh, what I, about the games that I talked about here. If you can fill me in, I would be happy. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.